All right. February the 27th today. How's everyone doing? Uh, life goes on. Let's take each day at a time, moment by moment, in submission to God's Holy Spirit and God's Word. I hope this message finds you and your family doing well. Um, let's get into our reading, shall we? Our readings for today will come from Leviticus chapters 20 to 22. Mark chapter 9 will begin that chapter today. I uh, will also begin Psalm chapter 43 today and we'll continue in Proverbs chapter 10. So before we open our Bibles, let's pray. Lord God, please bless your word to me, to those who are following along in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so before we get into the Old Testament, let's continue in Mark's eyewitness account. Let's begin in chapter 9, verse 1. It says, Jesus went on to say, I tell you the truth. Some standing here right now will not die before they see the kingdom of God arrive in great power. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James and John and led them up on a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed and his clothes became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly bleach could ever make them. Then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking with Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Rabbi, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't really know what, was at, what else to say, for they were all terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they saw only Jesus with them. As they went back down the mountain, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept it to themselves, but they often asked each other what he meant by rising from the dead. Then they asked him, why do the teachers of religious law insist that Elijah must return before the Messiah comes? Jesus responded, Elijah is indeed coming first to get everything ready. Yet why do the scriptures say that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be treated with utter contempt? But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they chose to abuse him, just as the scriptures predicted. When they returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them, and some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe, and they ran to greet him. What is all this arguing about? Jesus asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk, and whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, You faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. The spirit often throws him into the fire or into the water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean, if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen. You spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak, he said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet and he stood up. Afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with, the, with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer. All right, what an event. Let's go back into the Old Testament and we will begin today's reading 
and Leviticus chapter 22, verse 22. Oh, chapter 20, verse 22, sorry. And it says, You must keep all my decrees and regulations by putting them into practice. Otherwise, the land to which I'm bringing you as your new home will vomit you out. And I'm going to stop there. Just remember, when it says you, it's referring to the nation of Israel under the old covenant, okay? Do not live according to the customs of the people I am driving out before you. It is because they do these shameful things that I detest them. But I have promised you, you will possess their land because I will give it to you as your possession, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God who has set you apart from all other people. You must therefore make a distinction between ceremonially clean and unclean animals and between clean and unclean birds. You must not defile yourselves by eating any unclean animal or bird or creature that scurries along the ground. I have identified them as being unclean for you. You must be holy because I, the Lord, am holy. I have set you apart from all other people to be my very own. Men and women among you who act as mediums or who consult the spirit of the dead must be put to death by stoning. They are guilty of a capital offence. The Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the priests, the descendants of Aaron. A priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean by touching the dead body of a relative. The only exceptions are his closest relatives, his mother or father, son or daughter, brother, or his virgin sister who depends on him because she has no husband. But a priest must not defile himself and make himself unclean for someone who is related to him only by marriage. The priests must not shave their heads or trim their beards or cut their bodies. They must be set apart as holy to their God and must never bring shame on the name of God. They must be holy for they are the ones who present the special gifts to the Lord. Gift of food for their God. Priests may not marry a woman defiled by prostitution, and they may not marry a woman who is divorced from her husband, for the priests are set apart as holy to their God. You must treat them as holy because they offer up food to your God. You must consider them holy because I, the Lord, am holy and I make you holy. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she also defiles her father's holiness, and she must be burned to death. The high priest has the highest rank of all the priests. The anointing oil has been poured on his head, and he has been ordained to wear the priestly garments. He must never leave his hair uncombed or tear his clothing. He must not defile himself by going near a dead body. He must he may not make himself ceremonially unclean, even for his father or mother. He must not defile the sanctuary of his God by leaving it to attend a dead person, for he has been made holy by the anointing oil of his God. I am the Lord. The high priest may, carry, may marry only a virgin. He may not marry a widow, a woman who is divorced, or a woman who has defiled herself by prostitution. She must be a virgin from his own clan so that he will not dishonor his descendants among his clan, for I am the Lord who makes him holy. Then the Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to Aaron and all future generations. None of your descendants who has any defect will qualify to offer food to his God. No one who has a defect qualifies, whether he is blind, lame, disfigured, deformed, or has a broken foot or arm, or is hunchbacked or dwarfed, or has a defective eye or skin sores or scabs or damaged testicles. No descendant of Aaron who has a defect may approach the altar to present special gifts to the Lord. Since he has a defect, he may not approach the altar to offer food to his God. However, he may eat from the food offered to God, including the holy offerings and the most holy offerings. Yet because of his physical defect, he may not enter the room behind the inner curtain or approach the altar, for this would defile my holy places. I am the Lord who makes them holy. So Moses gave these instructions to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites. The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to be very careful with the sacred gifts that the Israelites set apart for me, so they do not bring shame on my holy name. I am the Lord. Give them the following instructions. 
In all future generations, if any of your descendants is ceremonially unclean when he approaches the sacred offerings that the people of Israel consecrate to the Lord, he must be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. If any of Aaron's descendants has a skin disease or any kind of discharge that makes him ceremonially unclean, he may not eat from the sacred offerings until he has been pronounced clean. He also becomes unclean by touching a corpse or by having an emission of semen, or by touching a small animal that is unclean, or by touching someone who is ceremonially unclean for any reason. The man who is defiled in any of these ways will remain unclean until evening. He may not eat from the sacred offerings until he has bathed himself in water. When the sun goes down, he will be ceremonially clean again, and may eat from the sacred offerings, for this is his food. He he may not eat an animal that has died a natural death or has been torn apart by wild animals, for this would defile him. I am the Lord. The priests must follow my instructions carefully, otherwise they will be punished for their sin and will die for violating my instructions. I am the Lord who makes them holy. No one outside a priest's family may eat the sacred offerings. Even guests and hired workers in a priest's home are not allowed to eat them. However, if the priest buys a slave for himself, the slave may eat from the sacred offerings. And if his slaves have children, they also may share his food. If a priest's daughter marries someone outside the priestly family, she may no longer eat the sacred offerings. But if she becomes a widow or is divorced and has no children to support her and she, re- and she returns to live in her father's home as in her youth, she may eat her father's food again. Otherwise, no one outside a priest's family may eat the sacred offerings. Any such person who eats the sacred offerings without realizing it must pay the priest for the amount eaten plus an additional, additional 20%. The priests must not let the Israelites defile the sacred offerings brought to the Lord by allowing unauthorized people to eat them. This would bring guilt upon them and require them to pay compensation. I am the Lord who makes them holy. I thank God that we no longer live under these laws and these obligations. We live uh, under the New Testament And we are saved through faith in Jesus Christ, the Messiah that the Old Testament points to. Salvation is a gift of God. That is his undeserved favor. We no longer have to work our way to heaven. Or they never did, really. Um, It was always through faith. But I'm just so grateful that we no longer have to follow these uh, very rigid and strict laws and regulations. Praise God for Jesus Christ, the Messiah. All right, let's start in Psalm chapter 43 today. Declare me innocent, O God. Defend me against these ungodly people. Rescue me from these unjust liars. For you are God, my only safe heaven. Why have you tossed me aside? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? Send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. There I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. I will praise you with my harp, O God, my God. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I'll praise him again, my Savior and my God. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 18 is our next reading. And it says, Hiding hatred makes you a liar. Slandering others makes you a fool. Hiding hatred makes you a liar. Slandering others makes you a fool. Well, I don't want to be a liar and I don't want to be a fool. So I'm not going to hide my hatred and I'm not going to slander others. Okay, those are our readings for today. Tune in tomorrow, February the 28th, as we continue in our second month of our one-year Bible reading plan. Um, if I'm correct, 20 in the year 2024, the year I'm recording this, how many days are there in February? I think it's a leap year this year, right? Right, okay, so tomorrow will be our last reading for February. Uh, February the 29th, there will not be any reading. Um, And then uh, tune in on March the 1st as we begin in our third month of our one-year Bible reading plan. 
Have a great day if you're listening to this in the morning or a peaceful night's sleep if you're listening to this in the evening. Otherwise, uh, tune in tomorrow and as usual, we always pray, come soon, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen.